All right, let's do it. Uh, yeah, the title was uh, Three is the Magic Number. Um, one of the goals of the usability team is uh, to provide a Drupal 8 that has a, a bit more specific initial experience, uh, something a bit more coherent that uh, is a bit more clear about what you can actually do with it. Um, and I have three general ideas how, about how we can uh, achieve that. First of all, volcanoes sucked. I had a core conversation basically around this topic for San Francisco. Uh, Iceland uh, got in the way. Um, I want to do the, these slides uh, as an introduction uh, once more. I did them uh, over Skype. I think that was the first car conversation. Wait, San Francisco? Sorry, sorry, the conversation. Even? Uh, no, yet. Corey got some. Yeah. So uh, there was a strict format for how to define your proposal, four slides. The context was Drupal can do everything. There's always a module for that. We are uh, good at promising everything, right? Core does nothing, almost nothing, really well. Uh, the default install profile sucks. Um, it provides the framework first. Uh, features are generic or incomplete, and Core can't target a specific use case. And this is all mostly by design. Uh, around that, uh, uh, the, the product versus framework uh, debate was uh, well on the way, actually. Um, and this was just my attempt of trying to <laughs> show you that I kind of uh, understood what the underlying concepts were, that there was a core with a framework and a contrib space uh, that lets you collect uh, and assemble all the things together into your specific awesome application. Uh, there were some good blog posts around that time, and uh, I liked it. So my vision then was, yes, we need to provide core, and provide core with a couple of ideas of um, stop applications. No. Uh, last year we talked about this as getting you to the 60% use case, so that you'd be invested. You'd have something up and running, it get, would get you invested and would uh, compel you to look further and dive into country and start to find the right module that would get you further. So maybe the installer would have uh, some kind of pull down and have some thematic themed uh, sites for you available with specific configuration, maybe a different node type, etc. Or the shortcut to no thanks, I just need the framework and I'm gonna do my own thing. Psyche, revived by Kupit's Kiss by Canova. It's in the Louvre in Paris. Uh, last year, Dries' uh, keynote mentioned that Drupal, using Drupal applications should be a delightful experience. <laughs> um, if you've ever seen it, it's it's, it's marble, but it's so tender, so uh, uh, delicate. It's uh, pretty quite amazing to see. Um, another heuristic that Dries provided was for Drupal 8 and UX is to provide newbies primarily and experts secondary a good initial experience. That's what we've been talking about, right? On-ramp, providing on-ramp. Um, well, we can check how Drupal, how Drupal performs uh, uh, doing that now, and we did. We saw that earlier today. Is that delightful? Nope. <laughs> this is the Laocon group. This is from uh, uh, 100 BC around. It's a Trojan priest, Laocon, and his sons being strangled by sea serpents. And if you look, if you see this statue, he's really in pain. <laughs> I promised I would sneak in some art history. Uh, earlier today, we saw uh, a good summary of the, the last Google usability test <laughs> uh, that was performed. 
Um, and just yesterday, uh, a good high-level overview of the, the main problems that are in this install, or are in this experience, are summarized as many problems on the conceptual level, problems on flow, getting people from one step to the next step. Uh, terminology, that's the most pervasive one we've always seen throughout all usability tests, and just clunky interfaces. So, hmm. To me, this boils down that the blank canvas that we provide right now is not helpful to people anymore. It used to be because prior to Drupal 6 and before, it was mostly a developer's tool for developers. So what you would get would map to what the people that were going to use it think about stuff. That's not really the case anymore. So how are we going to achieve this? Provide a more targeted, more specific initial experience. One of the things we tried to do in defining uh, uh, the usability gate was to define for ourselves some driving principles. I mean, uh, we have usability tests that give us real data on what, we, on what is wrong, what we should be fixed, uh, and then there's other, use case, other problems or issues or things we want to improve that don't really have a perfect answer. We're always making trade-offs. And uh, um, then you can rely on design principles and choose a few uh, that uh, can support you and help inform the design decisions we need to be making. Sorry. So the, one, the first one would be easy first and powerful under the hood. Right now, everything is there all at once. Uh, maybe we should narrow that down and let people discover the more advanced stuff later. Connect the dots is another one in the sense of, uh, that we should provide more specific workflows for people, getting you from the one step to the next step. Um, but then, for whom are we connecting which dots? That's still the question. But currently the UI is fragmented, it's unweighted, it has little hi hierarchy to it, uh, and there's no real visual mechanism to denote important stuff from less important stuff. So it will be hard for people to connect the dots. This helps in connecting the dots. It has some parts filled in. Um, it empowers you because you know what you'll be getting and this looks achievable. And um, I mean, this is a, a children's thing, but there's, there's quite a few concepts in here already. Uh, it has a clear task. Uh, some parts are already filled in, uh, so you already get a sense of what you, where you'll be heading. And I mean, even that little cactus in the background, it gives you perspective on what's important and what's not. So connect the dots. The main question then is, for whom are we connecting the dots? For which use case, for which uh, role are we uh, uh, providing that on-ramp? We want to be as specific as possible here, but that's always a challenge with core, right? So to help start framing this, I've been thinking around three high-level use cases that we can explore and define, a, a deep, uh, yeah, explore. So I doodle a lot. <laughs> uh, and uh, these are small little doodles and there's a lot of condensed thinking in there in a way. Um, my three use cases were, okay, just the single, the individual use case. I mean, it's baked into you, uh, human nature to think me, me, me first. It's as it is. Uh, yeah, we all know designers are the most egocentric of all, so maybe uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we could do something for uh, solo designers or visual or, uh, and provide them with a mechanism that helps them get their stuff out. Maybe a portfolio. The second one was us, a group of people, a collective. It would, uh, where the designer uh, um, 
The design use case would also target more the editorial, the editor UX. Uh, the us is, is uh, a small group of people. This is Snowman, right? Uh, if, you, if you've heard that before. A small group of people, a collective, that want to build something and work together on something online. And then there's, most of you here, the, the developers, who uh, are the most philanthropical, uh, philanthropic of all, uh, and, uh, but only that to achieve world domination, right? No, no <laughs> limits. Uh, I, I also don't call it the <laughs> anything scenario. I mean, no holds barred. And this is where uh, the, the abstract uh, and the, the flexibility comes from. Um, let's look at each three in a little bit more detail. So the me use case, me, 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 <laughs> and could be a portfolio thing. Sun, still smoking? Uh, he actually uh, took on on this. And uh, um, I even started a, a project for it. And um, the idea is here, why not provide people with a starting point to get their own work out there? A professional portfolio, maybe for a freelancer. And uh, we uh, did some uh, uh, work on that actually in the Berlin Design Camp last year. We did a brainstorm on that. And there the starting point was, OK, maybe even mobile portfolio. Maybe silly, but. And really, it has uh, a quite simple, uh, a couple of quite simple re requirements. The main object would be for you to get to show your stuff and to allow other people to contact you. Done. Um, people don't, usually, people say that you can't do anything constructively with core. I disagree. Uh, so, I have a personal example. I make uh, etchings, monotypes. Uh, try to get my hands dirty sometimes uh, instead of uh, typing on keyboards and stuff and drawing, drawing up wireframes. This is a sub-theme of seven. <laughs> this is 50 lines of CSS, and it gives me a presentation. It's even, all right, I could show it later. I mean, this 50, C, uh, 50 lines of CSS in a sub-theme, for, for the most part, it, and otherwise it's just Drupal core, and that 50 lines of CSS makes it responsive. Even I can resize, and it, the content will reflow. Really core only, and there's a little footer that says contact me if you want to know more. Use case covered. Did I throw out the, yeah, I threw out the one for snowman. So the second use case, a group of people collaborating on a project who want to tell the world about it and convince others to join in. Uh, and the snowman uh, use case has been the most talked about it and it hits squarely at where Drupal comes from. I mean, Drupal, Drupal was that project itself. It just grew out to be, <laughs> to, to the world, <laughs> domination scenario. Um, but in a sense, and there's a lot to learn there from the, the lessons from Drupal 3 talk, Ken Rickett has been uh, doing a couple of years ago. Um, a, did you know there's a scheduler module in Drupal 3? That could, where you could set I want to list to be published then. Nice. So the studio where I do, this, do the, the printing is exactly uh, uh, that group of people. They need uh, to present their facilities to the outside world. And uh, there's like 20 or 30 members there uh, that uh, would like to communicate privately as well uh, to help organize uh, the, the next exposition, the next uh, exhibit. Uh, again, a core only site. It works quite well. So, I think it can be done. I mean, you hit the limits pretty soon. And I mean, like we are all here are uber, uber, uber experts in Drupal, so I know which ones, uh, which uh, little bits to apply to make it work. But you can do. Yeah, I need help uh, for the for the world domination use case. Uh, this would be a developer specific uh, thing. Uh, I would like to repurpose the Butler <laughs> working title. Um, uh, uh, TNG, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, we don't have, we, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that we're all uber, uber experts in all things to Drupal. Um, we want to attract smart developers who are not experienced with Drupal. So what can we give them besides just a code base that will help, help them get up to speed? I mean, Drupal 8 will have awesome new stuff in the, for them. Fabulous new architecture and really sharp generic APIs. Um, but what reach out can we do for them? to uh, uh, help th them wrap their heads around the awesome, right? Because that's the goal. I'll need help here, but uh, what stuck out for me is uh, uh, the SDKs that uh, Dries mentioned in his keynote, maybe something like that. I hear people uh, when they, uh, when I overhear discussions, I hear a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, I just uh, put on DSM just to follow where everything's coming from. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we can do a little tool for that. Maybe, I don't know. Three use cases for me, for us as a group, and for the world. And of course they would feed, uh, uh, they would la layer on top of each other. What we do right for, for the me use case would help uh, uh, the feature set for the, for the us use case as well. And maybe even the, the, the generic, uh, or the, the world domination scheme. Let's do it. Um, Dries uh, proposed in his uh, uh, keynote that we even have a design process <laughs> with some clearly marked uh, uh, phases uh, before we hit uh, feature freeze. Um, I put in a couple of issue numbers right now for the stuff I think that we should be working on for portfolio. Uh, Sun has been uh, working on, uh, and we have been working on a good big spreadsheet which goes beyond that uh, one portfolio for uh, visual person, uh, but has a lot of use cases for any other type of individual that might want to achieve the same thing, present themselves professionally. Snowman has a couple. Uh, private forums is, is one, uh, uh, like I mentioned in, the, in my use case, where we would like to discuss privately about the next ex exhibit that we're uh, uh, organizing. Um, and for Butler, I, I had once, uh, once uh, the other idea I had that was called tissues, uh, that would be uh, some kind of issue tracker, RSS feed like issue tracker, or maybe a mobile app that could uh, uh, pull in your issues, and you could see three updates and two updates. So I tried to, pull, I mean, aggregator can pull in <laughs> the RSS feed of my issues. And that's where it stopped because it's not actionable. It won't show three new or two updates here or there, but. Something like that, you know, uh, uh, something that combines uh, the new services that will be available. And uh, if we use that example as use your issue tracker, have a hook into contributing. So maybe that's where we might end up for core. Uh, choose your Drupal, that's uh, a big vision uh, document that uh, Sun put out as well. Um, I think it's a, it's a useful framework to start exploring still. We ha still have a, a bit of time to explore this. Um, and we need more options and then do the analysis and uh, really focus on what we have to put in there to make it work. Um, and we should, I think we should go for that. Thanks. <laughs> a couple of links. That's it. Any questions? So, <laughs> while you're scaling through that, yeah. um, first of all, plus one, I love this plan. Um, my question is, between this kind of developer-oriented Butler uh, installed profile and just the code, what would, do you see the difference being there? Because if you want to use you know, Drupal as a you know, development framework-y type thing, isn't 
just the code what you would want? What, what would be the difference between those two options? Uh, besides just installing core, and what would the, be the extra layer um, for people? Yeah, the, the on-ramp there, I don't I, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm thinking example code. Uh, I'm thinking, I mean, I, I, I think I remember that you once pointed out that some Java thing had the pet shop example. I don't I'm sorry, know. come again? If, I don't know if you mentioned it once, uh, uh, that uh, some kind of Java development environment provided developers with a, a, a prototype that uh, was a pet shop, where you could buy pets. Maybe I messed up, mixed that up. Maybe, it, it sounds similar to like the uh, Northwind database that Microsoft database products have included forever. Okay, I don't know. So, I mean. Um, but we, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for ideas there. I don't know what developers specifically run into and what is there. Uh, what are their problems in, in crocking Drupal? So I'm looking for ideas. Do we have ideas? I'm not sure I'd have to think about it. Um, is, is your idea that you know, Drupal professionals who build sites and know what they're doing and just want to jump in and build their client site, which of those do you see them using? Ah, right. Uh, hopefully, yeah, the idea would be to have that third one specifically target to people uh, to help developers get up to speed around Drupal concepts. Uh, that may be, I mean, I'm guessing that would be less about the UI, mm -hmm. getting around the UI and getting stuff, uh, stuff done, and more about the underlying code and, I don't know, hooks. Uh, okay. I, I'm not sure what the line is, but yeah, sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like I like this idea a lot, and I um, it almost seems like it would make sense to have three kind of install profiles like that, but have them be one, some, and all, or something like that. And the all wouldn't necessarily be; it would be different from what from what you're saying about the developer, but more be like for a forum or some some kind of site that wants to involve anyone and everyone. And then the middle one, the sum, would be for like a, a group or organization, like a, like a company. Um, so it could, it could have something to do with what, how many roles you start with as the, as the base, uh, how many um, uh, content types, uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, something like yeah. That. yeah, I mean, um, I, I fully su subscribe to this whole framework idea, and I think this is how you prove <laughs> that you're being a framework. I really like this idea, and I love the slides. <laughs> um, but besides that, uh, so can you tell me more uh, about the research which you did? Because I'm kind of stuck with the word portfolio, because that, I know this is just, you know, discussion phase. So mm -hmm. it would be really helpful for at least me, probably some other people, if you could tell what came from the research as to what, what constitutes portfolio specifically in terms of the need. Because it could be like, um, I don't know, it's just, I just want to blog. And the reason this I'm asking is uh, what we've done in Drupal Gardens is that we have this kind of uh, different templates that we call. Uh, and we put like um, blog template and work template or something like that. And that's probably what, there is some overlap. So it would be really interesting to know what came from the research. Uh, there's little research here. Yeah, this is uh, me <laughs> thinking up stuff. Um, but uh, one of the other bylines for this uh, portfolio uh, idea was it is not a blog. Because why would we want to compete with WordPress and Tumblrs and et cetera, all that? So I'm, I'm thinking um, from my egotistical uh, designer point of view that this uh, that specific use case would also be a good showcase for the media module. Right? where we show off how awesome it is to now embed movies, slideshows, and images into your content type. But then wouldn't that mean that we are encouraging people to not use Drupal for, the idea is that we have to make the initial experience better for new users. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just blogging and doing simple things. Yep. And, and if we are saying portfolio, so do we want to have a, only portfolio kind of websites on Drupal? Isn't that, yeah, uh, I mean, blogging, a blog is, of course, a perfect uh, example for a single person's use case, yes. Um, I try to uh, uh, think around it a bit because it's pretty generic. I mean, 
we can end up there. Um, um, many of the ideas quickly hit that it would have a new section or a blog or some stream of updates uh, ordered chrono chronologically. Um, so I don't think blog is out of the question. I just want, just don't want to focus on that right now because I want to find ideas that are a bit more <laughs> original or a bit more specific than that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the presentation, Roy. It's really cool. Um, thanks. I guess very similar. Um, what I'm thinking is are we, if, if you sort of have three pretty established paths for someone when they are like thinking about it, they want to use Drupal or not, if there is a problem there where you'd be perhaps ostracizing users who, you know, I don't want a portfolio, I want my school newspaper website to, yep. to be on Drupal. Um, and then I had another question. I guess you can answer that first because I forgot the other one. I mean, just <laughs> is there any thought there about, you know, are we going to be sending messages to people that, I mean, basically what you're saying, that the one way to do it is, is really the, the established way, the other ways are not as yeah. kosher. I mean, that's, that will be the tough thing to balance. How specific we will be being, uh, how specific we will communicate about what this can do for you. Um, I don't know, we'll have to find out. I, I'd like to have very specific ideas first so that we can maybe derive the generic underlying stuff from that and that's what gets in core. Um, I actually, um, when I saw your uh, demo of uh, the, the how, do, how do you call it, the introduction? The up to speed aid thing. Sorry? The up to, the, yeah, the onboarding up to speed yeah, aid. The, yeah, thing. yeah, the onboarding experience, which was product agnostic, right? It just helped uh, yeah. explain core concepts. I was, <laughs> I was almost going to say, yeah, that's maybe a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that there is a, a lot of uh, uh, useful there, yeah. Um, I mean, sample content, just have one note in there yeah. somewhere that you can unpublish and edit and move around. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. Think, I think with enough research and with surveying of new users, maybe you can bring it down to, you know, three really good use cases that people are going to mostly want. Yes. I mean, I know when we surveyed people for, for the Google thing, the people that were trying, the websites they really wanted to build, we had like a newspaper website, we had a blog, and okay, I think we, yeah. we did have a portfolio example, so maybe getting more research on that can help, yeah. you know, pick these yeah. out. Yeah, um, I mean, what we see now that the absolute genericness that we present now doesn't really help anybody. Right. <laughs> So, uh, and we're going, by choosing, we're always leaving others behind. Yeah. And that would be new <laughs> for Core to do. Um, I don't know if, if, I mean, there's uh, all this new packaging uh, awesomeness that's, uh, that's released right now. I don't know if we can do a Core Plus uh, where we provide people with the options that, okay, if you want to do this, then let, let us fetch this, this, this extra module and set it up for you. Cool. Thanks. Hey Roy, Hi. <clears throat> so I really liked your presentation and I obviously I really agree with what you say about trying to please everyone means you end up pleasing no one. And Drupal is probably, well I think it probably has the broadest uh, target audience of any product that I've seen. So I like this move towards installation profiles, but I've been thinking recently that the word installation profiles probably doesn't mean anything to a non-technical user or someone who's new to Drupal. Yep. So do you think it's worth thinking about at this time changing the name of installation profiles to something that's more meaningful to a non-technical user? <laughs> depends on the user, <laughs> depends on the target audience. I think uh, the people who have to make it work are pretty much used to the install profile word <laughs> because that's uh, uh, what they come up with. Uh, and um, I mean, in, the, in that UI, if there would be a select list where you can choose uh, different side recipes, maybe like we discussed, that, that I think that word should not be there at that time. At that place and uh, product could be an application could be a, a good a good example or maybe recipe yeah um, I don't think we should pre present people who are going to uh, check out Drupal with uh, a, a selection of install profiles no. well I mean like if you asked your mother what an installation profile was she probably yeah. <laughs> wouldn't be able to tell you right yeah yeah okay thanks wording is <laughs> important <laughs> Um, actually, to both of those points, one, one idea about Becky's question about, like, I don't want a portfolio, I don't want a group site, and I'm not a developer, so 
yeah. WordPress, um, is, you know how you had a, an option there for like, no, just give me the code. You could also have an option there that's like, show me some other options or something, click, yeah. and then that takes you to the distribution listing on Drupal.org. And then point. to your point about the name installation profiles, um, in November, I um, destroyed a good chunk of my soul um, trying to do this work on the distribution stuff. So I led a bike shed discussion about what we should rename installation profiles to, um, thinking product or app or something like that might make more sense to people. The consensus I was able to build was essentially, and this isn't universal consensus, but this was the best I was able to do. So if somebody else wants to take it on after me, that's fine. But it's basically that installation profile should only be the name of the actual code in the profiles directory. So right. that thing that developers write is called an installation profile. Yeah. The distribution should be the name of any kind of collection of code that's like one or more installation profiles. And on Drupal.org, we should call it distributions everywhere. And I don't like the word distribution because I think that doesn't make sense to normal people, but I wasn't able to build consensus on any other term that people like better. Because the problem mm. is like product implies commercialism. Yep. App implies something way more limited than a distribution. So, you know, I wasn't able to come up to that consensus. But I'm currently working on a on a, a listing, like basically a bunch of just little cosmetic tweaks basically to Drupal.org to just make distributions more front and center. So like yep. adding the option to either download core or a distribution anywhere that we offer that button, um, and then like making it a top level thing, that kind of stuff. So if anybody wants to help me on that, that'd be great, because I'm pretty much ready to be, I'm sick of that fucking issue, and if anybody wants to help me just bang it out yeah. <laughs> on Friday, that'd be great, so. Yeah. It's good you have such a big soul, so. <laughs> so. So to your point about, you know, let's not, I don't want to harp too much about the word installation profiles, and I agree that it's not a common term. It shouldn't happen five years later. We are discussing the same problem we have with the word modules. Um, there are certain ways in which we can find out what people normally think about how they see installation profiles, and I may be able to help you with that. So we could do some research with people, and uh, it should not be a big uh, extensive project. Um, I also think this looks really cool. Uh, one question, just just make sure I'm understanding it correctly. So these are like different, these are basically just different styles of distributions that people would download. They're not things to be con configured after you download, correct? Um, the way I understand it, that if by choosing one of these options, uh, uh, then the installation process continues and sets up what's in that shopping list for uh, what's in the distribution of uh, in the installation profile. So the installation profile contains uh, the kind of content types you'll get, uh, maybe that uh, uh, sample content, et cetera. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think that sounds great. I think that there could be some really, I mean, I think the, the idea of having portfolio and a few other, you know, like a newspaper or something like that, very easily r relatable. Um, metaphors, I guess, that people can, can latch on to is really cool, but I think I guess another problem that presents is like if you want a website that has the same tendencies as a newspaper, the same style of structure, but just different names, it's really like once you like it's hard for users to make that leap. I guess to say, oh, yeah. conceptually I want it organized like a newspaper, but like I don't understand that. But, but so, I'm in a football team. Yeah. 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 yeah right. Right. And so. Um, there might even be a cool application for some kind of interaction, uh, interactive, like what do you actually want to do with your thing, like a little widget kind of things that like can custom build. I mean, something that's not complicated, that's not overwhelming at all, but it's like, yeah. what are you looking to do with your site? Something more than like A, B, or C, it like actually yeah. asks you a few questions and based yeah. on the interaction of those. Um, and that wouldn't have to be in core, that would be on Drupal.org. Yeah, and like, and, and like that, you can that even could lead you to I mean, that would even be a really cool way to discover distributions. Um, if it's like, look, maybe you want to download a flavor of Drupal that suits your needs so you don't have to do a ton of customization. Yeah. Um, some kind of like easy to use widget teeth thing. Yes. And I mean, this, this is uh, uh, being presented as ideas that would all be in core. And there's a, a lot of things we can do before you install or before you download, right? Yeah. So we should definitely take that into account. Yeah. Right. I hate to be the one to bring up this issue, um, but Hi. as has been observed before, Drupal core as it is now, it's really hard to build anything useful with. And you know, with if any of these things, we would have to either 
make them very, very simple, put more stuff into core, as in modules just throw into core, yep. or figure out some way to make these things technically separate from Drupal core itself and modifiable layers so we can make them actually packaged on the fly distributions or something. And I don't know which of those is least hard to do, but it's something that we need to be thinking about as well yeah. for all of these because you know, throwing views into core is not something we're really looking at right now, nor should we, but that means we have to think through a lot of what can we get done with these others. Mm -hmm. And I know yeah. when uh, Eaton was talking about a snowman originally, one of the points he raised, which I think is a very good one, um, is that if you, you know, if you need to do custom code for X, that means the framework has to improve so that custom code is just a button. Or it's just it's a? Just a button, or something like, like, like that. He was working at one point um, on taking like the node front page and some of the other default listings yes. things and rip those out of the existing modules and put them into a list module that is just those exact same things. But you can that one. <laughs> I that? Want, that one, I want it. <laughs> yeah. I think we need it. <laughs> um, so, you know, if we, if we do this, and I think we should, there will be a lot of feedback to where that application versus framework line is. Um, and so I, I actually think we should be doing this sooner rather than later as we're busy working on the framework, yes. which I'm working on. Um, <laughs> so I just, I, we should be mindful of what can we actually do with the code that actually is in core or yes. what loophole yeah. Can, yeah. can we find for that. I think this, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, relates to how Dries has been describing that we have to make core bigger and smaller, smaller in the sense that more, even more decoupled, even more abstracted, et cetera, uh, but chuck in a couple of more features. So on Larry's point, maybe the way to make more options available for end users while not making core bigger is getting, to make that, getting them to make that decision before they download Drupal yes. and instead point them towards distributions or installation profiles yes. instead of putting a lot more stuff into core. Yes, I think that was, uh, was suggested uh, right there as well. That, that uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Gareth, with the interview, right? The interview of what would you like to do uh, could be handled before. Yeah. So yeah, that that would um, should definitely be part of this. Uh, yeah. So kind of along that same line as uh, what he was just saying, I'm kind of envisioning. Uh, sort of what Angie was saying, where you have in the Drupal installation, you can click or choose another option sort of to get a list of distributions. And this is just an idea, but, and I don't know how feasible it is. I know in Drupal 7, you know, you can uh, set up like auto downloads of modules for upgrading. Um, possibly some way of, of uh, setting up the distribution system so you don't actually have to download a separate distribution. You can do it right from the installation itself, I, it would require internet access, obviously, and uh, some other things like that, but I Yeah, do. I mean, I like the ideas. I can't help, <laughs> really help make it a reality, but yes, I think that's a big part of the vision, right? Like, we would be able to do that. Um, Roy, this raises lots of questions, so maybe yep. I can throw a few out. <laughs> uh, how attached are you to three? I know it's called about three, but yes, uh, keeping it in theme. <laughs> three or more? <laughs> I missed that part of the uh, talk. Uh, so, so it is three for now. Is that what you're saying? It's not really three. <laughs> it's three or more. Uh, no, that, there's uh, uh, um, the suggestion was made that uh, well, there's this fourth link that no, just give me the code, or maybe there would be an extra link like show me all the other options. Answer? So it, it yeah no I, I just wanted to verify that before okay. uh, going on. Um, it does remind me a lot. I was uh, mentioning to Larry yesterday about a product that I designed some time ago, uh, back in the 90s. It wasn't web; it was a desktop thing, and it worked out really well. Basically, the idea I, I was working at Corel at the time, and the idea was to provide the power of Corel Draw. Uh, look that up in your history books if you don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> With the ease a bit, of use, a bit closer to the mic. Oh, okay. Uh, with the ease of use of a wizard, that was the challenge, the U UI design challenge. So, um, what what I designed basically was it started off as a wizard, 
and it's basically, a, it's not an install, it's a creation uh, process. By the way, Angie, uh, one possible alternative to distribution profile is thing is a site creation strategy. I just, just mentioning it, <laughs> just mentioning it. But it, it, it seems to me like that's what we're talking about. We're talking about site creation strategies here. And in the case of this product called Print House, it was about uh, some sort of document creation strategy. It started off as a wizard. It would ask you questions like, what do you want to build? Uh, a newsletter, uh, uh, a greeting card, a poster, and you would make very high level decisions. It would take you to the next step. You would come out of the wizard with the product, but then it would take you to a, an interesting magical place. That wizard went, a wizard is basically a tunnel. And you yep. go through it and you come out the other end. At the other end, you have something that looked a bit more like Corel Draw. That would be like, there's your surface for drawing things. There's the thing that you built. There's a set of tools. But there was also what I called an open face wizard, which was basically a state sensitive help system mm -hmm. that would ask you questions, I think Garen was saying, things like, what do you want to do next? And it was still high level. It would say things like, I want to change something. I want to print this. I want to save this, whatever. And then you would drill down through that. I want to change something. What do you want to change? Do you want to change the size of something? Do you want to add it to something? And it would literally take control of the tool set, the toolbox, and guide you with words to using the tool and to the point where it would say, okay, I've selected the picker tool. It didn't say that, but this is the picker tool. It would select it. Now pick the object you want to change. You do that, the state's changed, the help system changed accordingly. So now see those square you know, marks, pull yep. on those to make it bigger, you know, push on them to make it, whatever it said. So it basically took you through the whole process of going from something which gave you a product, but then could uh, you know, take you into the higher level or, or the more sophisticated use of the tools itself and you walk away with that as a trained person. I'm just saying that because it sounds similar, yes. similar kind of challenge. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say is that what you're describing here in terms of connecting the dots is very much uh, in, in resonates to me with the notion of narratives, which I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. So yes. it, is, it is a dot connecting kind of uh, yeah. uh, experience. We all go watch his talk. Um, uh, I think this is really an interesting um, idea and, and it's getting me thinking on a number of things, but I think from the discussion, um, I'm getting kind of a little worried that we're kind of having, wow, we could have wizards and we could have do this and we could guide them to picking the that. And I'm thinking, yeah, who's going to do this? Um, and also, if we have all this guidance, you know, I'm a, you know, one of the things is, we, you know, we want this to be an on-ramp to the power of Drupal. Um, and one of the things that's neat about Drupal is that, you know, it's, it's basically unlimited. Um, and so I think a lot of it is how, you know, I think what we want to have is we do want to have some things that, you know, kind of out of the box as they're installing it, they can make it do something mm -hmm. for the people who are at the very sort of beginning. Um, but I think what we need to do is communicate that these are just teeny tiny wimpy examples <laughs> and that there's a big universe out there that they can they can explore at their own pace as they want to yeah. um, and kind of give some pointers to those things, but not try to just, not try to do everything for them. But just, you know, I think it's a lot about to making clear what we're doing and not trying to do much, but, but definitely having something yeah. a, or, or three somethings or whatever it is. But I don't, I, I'm worried about this kind of, you know, yeah, but uh, this is trying them. to be really, really perfect instead of oh, just kind of going, yeah. let's be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, none of this would give you 100% uh, of what you need. Uh, this is, all three ideas are open-ended, right? And it's just meant as a, a means to help you <laughs> pave your first path in the jungle. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so um, very similar to, to what Sharon was saying. I feel like one thing really to avoid in this approach is 
you know, oh, I want to build, let's say they do want to build the portfolio, they hit portfolio and they install it, and then all the magic happens while the, you know, the bar is going, and then they're in the site. And in a way, they're almost even more abstracted from what it is to build a Drupal website. It's like all this idea of the modules, of the configuration, of maybe yeah. even permissions are involved and like things are getting changed behind the scenes. Um, it's almost like this question of, are we trying to empower new users to be awesome site builders like all of us can be, or are we trying to give them sort of a, to start with a scale down approach, hope that maybe 80% of the stuff they're gonna wanna do is covered by that, and then the rest of the 20% be this sort of like scramble to figure out what it is, you know, I mean, and they can go to the community and they can try and figure it out, but, yep. you know. Maybe the concern you're expressing is that if we take people by the hand so explicitly that yeah. we don't get them, uh, that we don't help them learn what to do to yeah. get the other. Exactly, yes. the, and, and that was the idea with this up to speed thing and just that if, yeah. you, if you give them like a bone, then they can just go run with it and sort of, you Most know, get there. redo my slides. I really like that approach. I just kind of do a, a follow up to respond. In a sense, what I'm kind of saying is, you know, I like this, you know, let's have one of these things and, and going towards your concern, but some of it is not so much uh, what we provide that I'm thinking we need to address as well, but addressing this thing of what we're telling them we're providing. So in saying, you know, here's the, you know, this is a site you can build, we kind of say, you know, this is like a, you know, a starter example. This is an example, you know, a, a simple example to get you started of, you know, or something like that where we're communicating to them, this is the tip of the iceberg. And we're, we're communicating to them throughout the process of this tip of the iceberg yeah. that there's a whole lot more there that they can explore. And so it's really kind of a thing about terminology and how we frame it as opposed to what, whether we provide this or not. I, yeah. mean, I, I think having a, this, some clear examples, they can go in and actually build a something is great. Um, I, but I'm just saying, yeah. let's, let's make it clear to them what we're giving them and not I, make them think that this is Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the concern and I'm <laughs> convinced that the community won't let us <laughs> do that. <laughs> um, in my ideal world, Drupal is a framework, barely has an admin interface and it lets me easily add modules and build custom stuff from scratch because I have fun yeah. doing that. Yeah. Uh, I think what we're getting at it's very important, but it sounds to me like it, it's more of a, like a web app. So is it possible to have like, like an application that's sort of like a story, like a game, for people to be introduced to Drupal of all levels that want to do all sorts of things and download by playing the game, by connecting the dots and the numbers, creating their customized profile of Drupal, kind of like what is it, Modernizer does that? I think you click and create your, and, and I guess it is just like Drupal Gardens also in a way does, does that uh, in much more, you know, two, two forms, I think, two mm -hmm. pages. Is, I'm that, just, is that possible I'm, in, your, in your world? I'm just glad I'm getting idea, other ideas in response and not, no! <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, that's, I'm, this, is, this is what I'm looking for, other options to explore. And I, at this time, for me, any idea goes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you just don't know what you all intend for. <laughs> <laughs> what century we will build it though, but that's, that's all right, so uh, going back to the question which Becky asked, and I think I agree to what he said, because what is happening right now is that we are putting people, new users especially, into this wall of text and options, making it overwhelming and intimidating, and that's why it's very difficult, and, and we have 
sort of the same approach for Drupal Gardens with the whole, you know, what we are talking, very similar to that. And, you know, I've done tons of research and we made it as simple as we can within the constraints that we live in. It's still, it's still, you know, a long way to go. But the point I'm trying to make is that if we give them that this a little, um, it's kind of a psychology thing is that you have to let someone succeed on the first task. And then, you know, if they struggle, because we don't want them to alienate right away. So right. we want to win the hearts and minds of people and we have to do that by empowering them. So we have to provide success in the first uh, steps. I mean, we'll hit any, everybody will uh, run into some kind of wall somewhere, but at least build some confidence. Yeah. So on the subject of, you know, dip not trapping people in the idea of Drupal as just a portfolio or just a whatever. Sometime earlier in this conference, someone tweeted, I don't remember who it was, about Google somewhere around here proposing um, something similar to what they do with their own apps, where you know, if you're a new user or if they've just changed the UI out from under you, they have messages that pop up that say, you know, you want to do X? Oh, you can do that over here. Hey, did you know you can do this? Go over here. Yeah. And then you can dismiss those or turn them off. But there's that kind of hints of more that is coming or yes. more that you than you know about and yeah, I think that could be a really really helpful way to you know help onboard people with Drupal you know, hey did you know you can add modules to your site yes and stuff like that because otherwise people don't realize that yes uh, as well as you know hey you know Drupal can do more than what this pr particular prepackaged app does so some something like that kind of approach I think could potentially help with both problems for, yeah. you know, hey, did you know you can add events that are already here? And hey, did you know you can add more modules and do something different? So that's, I think, something we can consider as a great way to help get people up that ramp of realizing just how much there is to Drupal. Yeah, we have outstanding issues uh, in the queue right now that uh, discuss providing tips or uh, some kind of uh, mechanism that, uh, I mean, that's another, uh, I mean, the way I framed Connecting the dots idea was big picture thinking, but uh, uh, yes, we want to provide some, we have need to find a pattern that uh, on the uh, content, create content uh, list where you show the article on the page and the forum topic to provide a link, create your own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I just want to second that. That's some, definitely something that we were talking about um, when we were thinking about the up to speed aid that we were proposing. Um, it's definitely a more complex implementation, but what's really great about it is that um, if you show a slideshow of like ten slides to users, like they're probably not going to remember most of it, um, which is really unfortunate. But the way that people actually do remember things is by doing it, and that's a great way to split to you know go into the middle between like do you do everything for them or do you like just tell them all the information at the beginning, but it, you know, it's this idea of like you have a tutorial that they follow along with and it's very contextual and it actually involves them doing that because then they develop that mental muscle memory, um, it's you know it's just more complicated to implement than something you know initially but like definitely something to think about and like studies have shown that like if you tell people to or if you show people how to do things in the context like that's how they understand and that's how they remember them um, and that's why things like that are very um, helpful I, I mean I, I guess you just have to make sure that you're guiding them like because like you don't want random things to pop up in random places and being like oh you're installing a theme did you also know that you can install modules because people would be like well I'm installing a theme right now what's a module uh -huh. you know um, so it just I, I guess you know as long context as you, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Exactly. I mean, it's, it's it's just to make sure that the the arc of you know the design and it's well tested and yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri, for for doing this session. Um, and um, yeah, uh, I think uh, one of the the 
the most important things we need to, to um, uh, see here is that um, all of the three um, possible distributions are um, just our first examples for what we can do with Drupal. And um, one of the most important points for me in the, in the process of portfolio thus far was um, the actual involvement of the community. And um, basically, uh, with the um, most important difference that, uh, that the community is involved in the in entire design process from the start. So basically, um, I what I mean is um, I could have probably hammered out that installation profile within a single day on my own. Yes. And, but we already have like, I think I counted them three months ago, but uh, um, back then I think there were 160 installation profiles. Oh man, we don't want to go the modules route, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and so I looked into many of them and um, they were almost undocumented. You didn't know what you actually get. Uh, it wasn't clarified for which audience it is, um, which features are contained. Um, I mean, everything that makes up a product, basically, um, which makes you, which makes everyone, um, um, well, yeah, choose a product, uh, um, regardless of what kind of product we are talking about. Um, and so um, that's basically, yeah, my, my most important um, lesson uh, from por portfolio thus far is basically to, uh, yeah, document the process publicly and get as many people as possible involved with different perspectives. So, um, yeah, we can hopefully end up with, uh, yeah, in my mind, the, 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 the very first installation profile or distribution that was built by the community and designed by the uh, community in the open and, um, and it's also going to be maintained by the community just like the installation profiles in Drupal Core are maintained by the community um, with the difference that these profiles might not end up in Core. Mm -hmm. So for example, Portfolio has um, many features that won't, yeah, won't be able to do uh, in, Don't in, fit in core, in, right? in, yeah. with, with core only. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we will have like 20 or 30 contrib modules that actually uh, deliver the functionality we are going to need. And, um, and yeah, so that's, um, so there's a, there's a very lengthy design process involved uh, with uh, lots of design decisions, but also technical decisions. And for the community, it's important to figure out how we actually build uh, a product. I mean, in the community, because we never did something like that before, and yeah. the core profiles don't really count because... Yeah, so <laughs> if, I if I understand you correctly, you say we should build one that does add contrib and uh, goes farther than uh, core can do? Right, and it is um, also... Uh, that's the current plan for a portfolio and mm -hmm. um, f um, uh, to be based on Drupal 7 and uh, to consume contrib modules. And um, when we are done with that, then we will actually have uh, some good or better understanding what is actually needed yeah. to build what such, a site, <laughs> yeah. such a site um, with Drupal. And then we have also a better understanding what do we actually need in core in order to support that specific use case. But what I'm really after is like um, 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 the, uh, it doesn't really matter at that much to me whether we are building a portfolio site or not. For me, the most important step is really uh, doing as the a exercise. community to yeah. figure out how we do it. I mean, yeah, there was a, also earlier this, uh, the, the question about um, is it a blog or not? Um, and how we came up with uh, um, with the name portfolio uh, and the and the the yeah the the uh, the goal of the of the product and um, and yeah the 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 cause for that was pretty simple. We um, basically 
um, the initial course was just, um, I looked at Larry's side, I looked at Uroy's side, I looked at my side, I looked at all of our own sides. And, and um, yeah, it's quite obvious, we, we all want to present ourselves, our work, and um, we, we don't really run blocks, we, we represent ourselves on the net. Yeah. And that's basically, um, that was basically the, 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 the most trivial product we could build and for which we actually have our own use Passion. case. Yeah. So we solve our own problem. And that's, I think, a very good approach to, to yeah, gain experience in this area. And we could also do the same for the, for the on-ramp profile. Um, and I'm specifically thinking there about local Drupal user groups, nice. which could use websites. I'm running runs uh, one since like six months, and um, I'm really having the problem there that I, I'm, I need to use Facebook, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I need to use all kinds of strange um, tools outside because um, there is no simple way to just simply say, okay, give me a site for my local user group. So we can plan this thing, we can organize the events, we can discuss uh, uh, stuff and document what we um, uh, discussed last time and, and who attended and whatever. I mean, and yeah, that's in the end exactly the, the, the original idea of Snowman or OnRamp. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, we could solve our own problems there and with such a profile, we could, um, yeah, um, yeah, start to to support our grassroots. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I think maybe that if it, if I'm thinking fantasy, uh, that instead of signing up to Drupal.org, uh, you'd install <laughs> your own Drupal.org and you'd be connected. <laughs> ah, uh, one last thing. Um, so there was also this uh, the idea of. Um, 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 basically, clicking together your profile, and um, I think we should defer all of these these uh, ideas to later, because um, when we really start to um, use profiles more in the community, then this will be just simply the logical after step. So um, yeah. I don't think. Um, we want actually we actually want to present a lengthy wizard to everyone who wants to just simply try to Drupal um, on Drupal org. Um, th those users just want to well perhaps download uh, one profile and start playing with it. And um, at some point, we want our profiles to allow um, yeah add features, certain functionality functionality to them that isn't contained right from the start. But um, right now, our main challenge is really to, to get that um, process started, the, yeah. the, the profile process. Will be an interesting exercise, yeah. yeah. So, um, two things. Two, yeah. <laughs> um, two things, one is a small nitpicking thing, but um, the other one I'm, uh, I have, a, I don't have the answer, and I don't know anyone uh, who would have the answer for the question, but the first one is, so what we are saying is that choose a profile or nah, just give me a, what's the out of the box experience. Um, I'm thinking probably it's, it's worth considering doing the opposite way, is like give me the out of box experience or choose, because it kind of sends a different message. message yeah. um, that's one thing um, we can cool. talk about. That The other question I have is that, uh, thinking about it, is like the I experience, is that I'm the site builder, I'm the designer, I'm the content creator. So it is based on the roles and not so much about what am I designing for. Whereas in a group, it's probably more separated and in a world, it's completely different, like it's Drupal.org kind okay, of thing. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it's, it's important because all those experiences are going to be different. And if you're talking so much about the onboarding experience, what we're going to present is going to be also different based on the roles. True. Was there a question in there? The question is, so is it worth rethinking, or not worth rethinking, is it worth, re I don't know, um, it's, um, it takes a while to absorb all these things and then yes. probably think about it, 
because once we go start designing and implementing, we never go and retrospect as that, is this the right way to go about it? Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to think about, does it make more sense to have these three buckets based on roles and not on what is on the website? Yeah, I mean, I'm utterly convinced that we won't have three, sp three specific products in core. <laughs> so um, I'm liking, uh, I think it's, uh, it's working as a conversation starter and I think that you're, you're bringing up valid points, yeah. Turn it inside out, upside down, please. Hmm? What's that? No, go ahead. I actually want to piggyback on uh, what Sun just said. One of the things I liked about the portfolio uh, concept when he first posted it was that the target audience was a Drupal developer because you know one of the core concepts in usability is you know, know that user and you are not your own user, Yeah. which makes it really hard to know what your user base wants if you don't know what your user base is. And we run the risk of having too abstract a target for some of these profiles. Yeah. And that you know, leads us into analysis paralysis and all that wonderful stuff that keeps things from getting done. But if we can say, you know, we want an install profile for the solo developer who wants to show off them. Yeah. We know what that, that person wants because we've got 30 of them in this room. Yeah. If we want an install profile not for, you know, an organization that wants to discuss and get stuff out. No, it's an install profile for a user group for something like Drupal or PHP or something like that. It that would have very specific, highlighting, right? Yeah, that is a very specific targeted yeah. use case. That is a very specific targeted yes. user that we can then build towards without running the risk of, well, what about this group and this group? We just say, no, this is what we're looking for. And then once we've got that built, maybe we can generalize it a bit. But as a first step, I really like that idea of. I, I like you know, that as a focus for yeah. the exercise uh, uh, Sun is uh, proposing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Use cases and users that we know intimately yeah. are a good first step. The question is, is how inviting that will be to the rest of the world? But said, it's a first step, and if we can yes. then build that and then generalize from there, yeah, sure. great. Hi, I think that um, you're solving a very, um, a very real problem for the business, and I think it's a great idea. Um, I would like to help, but it's not obvious in which pathway to help from the community because there's these three projects that are all kind of doing the same thing with this like the I, the us, the world concept, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there's lots of use cases that can fall in each one of those buckets, so I'm not yep. gonna even go there. It's not one thing, right? Those things are conceptual buckets, and I don't wanna, I'm not gonna try to solve that here. Um, but I, what I'm seeing is that there's um, a gap from a, the cohesive vision, and it's, it's indicative of all the questions being brought up, is let's define what installation profiles are, these markers that go with them, that type of thing. I would like to help, and I just don't see where, where a good place to start is. And maybe yeah. this is, a, uh, yeah, because I don't do a lot of the open source contribution. I'd like to start solving it, and maybe this is what you guys have run into a lot before. But I don't know. Like, who do I talk to? Do I talk to you? Where, do where, I talk to you? Where, where, Are you where, would, you, where would you like to help? Building, yeah. designing, uh, uh, conceptualizing? Uh. Yes, I, I'm an <laughs> architect. I can, and I'm coming from. Yes business and account management and everything, it's like, I, I don't care, I will help, because it's such a valid, valid yep. need for the community, for Drupal developers and businesses. And it, Drupal Garden saw it, right? Because they wanted to have the entry point into Drupal much easier, but then this is gonna be something where you can, as a developer, rip it apart a little bit more obtainable. And so that's where it's gonna, I, I think that the learning from Drupal Gardens would be great to leverage in this situation, and so it's a, it's a very cohesive effort, I think. Yeah. Um, the community, but I would like to help. So I'll talk to anybody after this. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> okay, I'm talking to you. <laughs> cool. But thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, thanks for all this feedback.